viewers welcome to the next session of the anatomy series and the next succession to this series is involving the scalp so particularly the layers of the scalp i'll be discussing i'll be discussing about in this video so the scalp when talking of the scalp is a very important question and a very most commonly asked questions in the various professional examinations whether it be mbbs bds whatever so in such exams the very common question what is being asked is the scalp and the layers of the scalp so the layers of the scalp can be better remembered if the demonic itself the scalp every alphabet of the scalp is referring to one of the layers of the scalp we can make out so the mnemonic of the to remember the layers of the scalp is itself the word scalp that is s c a l p is going to depict is going to tell you about as to what are the layers of the scalp in the success uh, successive orders so beginning with the first c of the scalp that is the c of the scalp refers to the skin so initially so scalp is a soft connective tissue that covers the cranial vault that is the cranial vault it is covering so this soft connective tissue which covers the forehead and the cranial vault it is known as the scalp and the layer that is the first layer of the scalp is the skin so the skin of the scalp is particularly the features the characteristics of the skin of the scalp is particularly that is it is thick the skin of the scalp is hairy it is supplied by sweat and sebaceous glands so that's why that is responsible for the profuse sweating and the oiliness the sebum secretion the sebaceous glands are richly supplied richly present in the scalp and the sweat glands are also abundantly found in the region of the scalp so that is responsible for the sliminess and the uh, the sebaceous glands are responsible for the for imparting a slimy and a um, oily texture to the skin of the scalp and the sweat glands are responsible for the secretion of sweat now this the skin of the scalp it is containing about 1.2 lakhs hair follicles now the first f of the scalp we have covered now moving on to the c the c of the scalp refers to the connective tissue or the subcutaneous tissue now the c of the connective tissue or the subcutaneous tissue when talking of it the next layer below the skin it is the connective tissue or the subcutaneous tissue now this connective tissue or the subcutaneous tissue it is also called as the superficial fascia so this superficial fascia it is consisting of lobules of fat which are bounded by tough fibrous septa septa is a partition or a division and this connective tissue it is bounded by tough fibrous septa so septa is the plural that is it is bounded by a large number of septa are present over here in the connective tissue now since this connective tissue is lying below the skin it is adherent to the skin above and the aponeurosis below so the c the s refers to the skin the c refers to the connective tissue or the subcutaneous tissue and the a refers to the aponeurosis or the galea aponeurotica so the c connective tissue it is adherent to the skin above and to the aponeurosis below now another very important distinguishing feature and a very characteristic important feature of this connective tissue it is the present of presence of blood vessels so the scalp is richly supplied by different large number of blood vessels and these blood vessels they are embedded in the connective tissue so viewers any injury students over there one thing i would like to make this very clear and you should must remember that in any kind of road traffic accidents or in any kind of injury whenever an injury occurs to the scalp it is the connective tissue blood vessels they are going to rupture so any injury to the scalp leads to the rupturing of the blood vessels and what happens is when these blood vessels rupture they are their lumen are not going to retract so once the blood vessels of the rupture during an injury or an accident when the blood vessels are going to rupture 
what is happening is the lumens of the blood vessels are not going to retract why because the lumen walls are adhering to the underlying connective tissue so the lumen walls are lying adhering to the underlying connective tissue that's why the blood vessels of the scalp they remain distended all right so the blood vessels they do not retract so since the blood vessels on an injury they do not retract lacerations of the scalp bleed very profusely so students and viewers out there i would like to very important this fact is a very distinguishing feature of the scalp that the main important the most important reason that the bleeding or an injury from the scalp is an extremely profuse bleeding occurs when an injury occurs it is because of this reason that the lumen of the uh, vessels of the blood vessels of the uh, scalp they fail to retract due to because they are adherent to the underlying connective tissue so that's why the blood vessels they do not retract and the, hence the lacerations of the scalp they bleed very profusely now moving on to the next a of the scalp the a refers to the aponeurosis layer so this aponeurosis layer it is actually a dense tough inelastic membrane so the a aponeurosis it is a dense tough inelastic membrane and it is also one uh, very common very it is also known by an another name which is known as the galea aponeurotica so the a of the scalp refers to the aponeurosis layer and it is also known by the other name is galea aponeurotica so this galea aponeurotica it is accounting for the mobility of the scalp so when we move our scalp when we press our scalp it this motion of the scalp it is all because of the mobility of the scalp is imparted by the aponeurosis or the galea aponeurotica now moving on to the l the l of the scalp refers to the loose areolar tissue so this loose areolar tissue it lies on the underlying bone all right so loose areolar tissue is going to lie on the underlying bone and moving on to the p it stands for the periosteum so this last p of the scalp refers to the periosteum and it is the periosteum refers to it is the pericranium which is covering the skull bone and is adherent to the suture lines of the skull so since the lower most the deepest layer of the skull it is the periosteum so this periosteum is going to adhere to the sutures of the skull and it is going to strict it is also called as the pericranium so this pericranium or the periosteum the p refers to the periosteum and this periosteum is firmly adherent to the underlying sutures of the skull so viewers this was the very famous mnemonic which has been widely discussed in all the medical and the dental colleges about the uh, scalp so viewers if you do like my video don't forget to like my channel like my video and do don't forget to subscribe and do press the bell icon so that you can be further updated about my newer videos thank you for watching